A while back, we started on the interactable system. This included things like falling beehives, explosive barrels, and more. The purpose was to provide life and reactivity to the world, or in other words, interact. This leads us into combat and the constant battle of not making stealth archers. No lollygagging. My goal with combat is to create something exciting and strategic. Players should have the ability to assess situations and react accordingly. Oh god, don't make a stealth archer, don't make a stealth archer, don't make I want the player to move with thought, taking resource management into account with their strategy while also having the ability to skillfully fight through a couple of enemies at a time in close quarters combat. With this in mind, oh god, oh god, oh god, with our interactables, there was really only one option. Sword, gun, rock. The gun will be a powerful ranged attack with scarce ammo. Players will have to conserve and be smart with how many shots they take. It'll one-shot one or two enemies, but never be enough to clear a whole level on its own. The sword or other melee weapon will be for fitting the gaps in your firing power. There'll be upgrades and alternatives to the sword, but the idea is a weapon with no resource requirement. The rock is a new interactable, and represents other environmental tools in the player's toolset. Rocks can be used to divert attention while stealthed, or trigger other interactables like the bee nest. And yes, I said stealth system. Ah, hello everybody, my name is Devin, and welcome back to another Project Riptide devlog. It's been a while, but uh, I have some cool stuff to go over today. But before we get into the showcase, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for 2,000 subscribers. We hit it just a couple weeks ago. I'll be doing a little uh, 2,000 subscriber Q&A. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section below. It can be anything about from uh, about the channel, uh, the development, whatever, whatever comes to mind. I'll try to get to as many questions as possible and put them in an upcoming video. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. Uh, let's get into the showcase. But yeah, what you guys just saw was a demonstration of the stealth and rock systems, two very important parts of our game going forward. Uh, rocks might manifest as different things in different environments, maybe gray rocks, whoa, that's crazy, uh, maybe bricks, you know? Uh, the important thing is just having a throwable uh, object that can interact with the environment. I do plan on expanding on this more and adding to the stealth system, but uh, for today's video, we're mostly just going over the ability to affect interact as well as the stealth system itself. Speaking of which... So the stealth system is as you just saw it. Uh, whenever the player crouches in tall foliage, like grass, tall grass, flowers, even wheat, I'm planning on probably retexturing the wheat to be too tall, uh, you'll be able to initiate a stealth. Um, let's see it in action. So if I start crouching, a scoreboard is going to start ticking up, and then there's two different states, hidden and full hidden, both of which will have different properties. Full hidden is what grants you the uh, the things that you want. And so having it attached to a ticking up and down scoreboard value allows us to uh, go in between uh, different little bits of foliage, right? So if I walk forward, we stay full hidden despite leaving, uh, briefly uh, leaving the foliage. So like so, like that. But if the distance is too far, will go back down to hidden. Maybe uh, being partially hidden has only certain attributes, right? Uh, and that allows us to be a bit more creative as well with our building, right? So we don't have to just have dense clumps of foliage. I can move in between them like so, right? And then if I get up, I am no longer hidden. I am now visible, right? 
Something I do want to do eventually as well is add a little visual indicator, like a uh, little little gradient around the side uh, when you go into stealth. So you're not just uh, waiting for the fog. You'll have a little uh, visual, uh, a better visual indicator than just the little smoke particles. I still need to play with the scaling as well as the texture itself, but it's something like this. This is using a concept called Unicode, uh, I believe it's called, and uh, it allows us to display images by using fonts. Uh, as well as the title command. Uh, so eventually we'll be able to have a nice little gradient around the edges that will kind of hone in our focus uh, when we enter a stealth mode. This actually makes use of the team system as well as invisibility, uh, which I think will be a pretty, pretty seamless uh, attention and just uh, aggro management, which is something we'll be able to play with later with the rock system. Uh, but yeah, let's also take a look at rocks. Just like with our other interactables, rocks will be able to uh, place very easily, uh, just like a custom block, uh, like so, right? Uh, as for how it works exactly, it's actually very similar to our locked door system. Uh, there's a little marker entity that gets placed along with the uh, button model as soon as we uh, place down our item frame. So we place a new rock, now, an, uh, now there's a marker there as well as a button down at bedrock that's being used as a reference to tell when the button is being pressed. So I'm going to trigger an advancement when I right click, it's going to check if the button's been pressed, then it'll run uh, our commands. So like so. And then we can just pick up rocks, which is a pretty cool mechanic. I, not, not really in Minecraft. I'm just right clicking and I get to collect a bunch of little items uh, for, uh, for the player. But don't go just yet, you guys know what time it is. Welcome back to another World Building Wednesday. Today, I wanna go over guns and copper. Guns will be a rare occurrence in this world. They'll be status symbols. This is in part due to the abundance of copper and the rarity of iron. In this fictional country, copper is everywhere, to the point where average everyday citizens have some knowledge of uh, copper metallurgy. Copper is a very soft metal. All anybody really needs to handle it is maybe a candle flame and a hammer. So in the case of guns, flintlock pistols made of copper are going to crumble under the blast uh, from gunpowder. So when a gun is made from a more expensive, sturdier alloy or metal, like bronze or, or maybe iron or steel, it's going to be a sign of extravagant wealth, maybe a, a, a merchant guild leader or even a noble. This even ties in with our combat mechanics. Well, in the case of guns, guns are going to be nearly disposable in some cases. Maybe the player comes across a copper gun. They'll be able to do a lot of damage in one quick shot, but they'll have to throw it away. The copper gun has crumpled. Then if the player comes across a character with a, uh, a rose gold flintlock pistol or even a steel one, they'll know that this character is very important. Or at least extravagant. You don't need a gun to be an important character. Thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for playing. Like, subscribe, all the things. My name has been Devin, and I will catch you next time. Bye bye